Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Inca's unique archery range unit, the Slinger. The Incas are of course a civilization based around finding counter units, and officially this is their answer to enemy infantry, to the extent it's commonly described as the Incas version of the hand cannoneer. Going into this, my perception was that the crossbow as a unit is generally good against infantry and even cavalry if you get a decent number of them, whereas the Incas other two archery range units are highly specialized. The elite skirmisher being good against archers and really nothing else, while the slinger is good against infantry and again nothing else. In the process of making this video though, I've started to question that description of the slinger, and especially after the plus one attack they were recently given, I think that characterization might undersell slingers to some extent. In this video, we'll explore those comparisons in Castle and Imperial Age, and hopefully give a sense of what you can expect from the slinger as it stands now. We'll start things off in Castle Age, and clear up the not always intuitive set of texts they're upgraded by. Right away, an important distinction with the Hand Cannoneer is that Slingers are affected by all Archer Blacksmith techs, so Fletching is helpful for attack and range, despite maybe the odd logic there of adding Fletching to a stone. They also recently gained an extra effect for the unique tech Andean Sling at the castle, adding plus one attack on top of removing the Slinger's minimum range. In fact, both unique techs apply to Slingers, and as we'll see, the Imperial Age one can be a pretty big deal in some matchups. In another contrast with Hand Cannoneers, at the University they also benefit from Ballistics, again sounding more like an Archer, and are even affected by Thumbring, though I should note that as of the most recent patch, that only improves them from 90 to 100% accuracy and no longer increases their fire rate, so I would argue it's the last tech here to prioritize. But now, let's see how they actually compare to, say, a standard crossbow with all of these upgrades. It turns out the two units are surprisingly similar in many ways. For example, they have the same total cost and the same attack once you get all upgrades. They also have the same base fire rate, and slingers even have a bit more HP and base accuracy, though nothing too significant. Unlike the crossbow, they also don't require a direct upgrade when you hit castle age, and are immediately ready to make. Of course, on top of this, they also have a bonus against infantry that the crossbow lacks. And so far, this sounds really good, and initially like they might almost be a straight up better version of the crossbow. The problem is most of the things mentioned so far also come with subtle downsides. First, their cost is food instead of wood, which is a slower and more difficult resource to collect. Their 7 attack is also only possible with a unique tech at the castle, again giving you an upfront cost of both a castle and an extra tech. Their fire rate is also not improved by thumbring as of last patch, meaning again crossbows eventually fire faster and actually have the edge. Even pointing out the extra crossbow upgrade simply reflects the fact that you can start massing up archers in feudal age, whereas that isn't even an option for slingers. They also have the added disadvantage of a minimum range, which is removed by their castle age unique tech, but again adds in that extra step. As you dig deeper, it becomes more obvious why Inca players usually default to archers if they're going for a ranged unit, and slingers are more often a situational emergency switch if you're up against a lot of infantry. Of course, that's the largest distinction, with 10 extra bonus damage against infantry, and even a surprising plus 3 against ramps, letting them do 3 damage per shot instead of the 1 that you would expect. If you're getting pushed by longswords, or even berserks or gabetto, which you see a little more of now these days, the slinger unquestionably gives you an immediate option to help stabilize, while also being fast enough to kite infantry and make their minimum range not usually a problem against anything except cavalry. Outside of fighting infantry though, I still think they look remarkably similar to crossbows, though that also brings with it some of these same inherent problems. For example, they aren't very good against mangonels or scorpions high pierce armor, and these are unfortunately popular pairings with infantry. Of course, as they are considered archers, they're also countered by skirmishers, just as much as crossbows are, taking the same bonus damage. Even in a castle age head-to-head -head with all upgrades, faster firing crossbows win consistently, though they do suffer significant losses. The new plus one attack from Andy and Sling definitely makes this matchup better than it was before, but even from this, it's pretty clear why crossbows are more popular in early castle age as a default, and I don't expect pure slinger against an archer sieve to really work despite similar looking stats. That sounds more like a job for Inca Eagle Warriors. Now, as for Castle Age Knights, this is arguably the most significant matchup impacted by Andean Sling, now giving plus one attack. I think some players would be surprised to learn that a group of Slingers with their unique tech do roughly as well against Knights as crossbows, needing the same number of total attacks. 
That said, without Andean Sling, between the minimum range and lower attack, your Slingers are going to be in trouble against Knights, so it's a really important tech now, letting them actually be a bit of a threat to cavalry in large groups, comparable to crossbows without thumb ring. At this point, I'm not sure it's fair to say they're completely destroyed by cavalry if you have a mass of them, and I'm revisiting that opinion a bit, at least in Castle Age. They're not even that much worse against archers head to head, so while I'd rather Inca's other options against crossbows and knights, I'm starting to think the slinger might be a bit more well-rounded than it was in the past. The fact they also throw in a huge bonus against infantry seems like an increasingly useful feature, with the new patches pushing infantry seemingly a bit more every time. And of course they can be paired with other units like Kamiaks or Eagles to cover their major weaknesses. The question then is if Castle Age is when they peak, given their lack of an elite upgrade, or if they still have some value to offer in the Imperial Age. While the lack of an upgrade might seem like a problem at first, it's important to remember here you do have quite a few techs that apply to them, from the blacksmith techs increasing attack, range, and armor, fabric shields increasing armor even further, and chemistry. So it's not exactly fair to say you're throwing a Castle Age unit into an Imperial Age fight unless you let that be the case. In fact, their 6 pierce armor is enough that against an equal number of arbalesters with similar total resources, they look very comparable, having one less attack and a slower fire rate, but two extra pierce armor, and can even match the arbalesters' range. I wouldn't go as far as saying they counter strong archers, but as we can see, they can more than hold their own in a pinch against generic ones, again assuming you picked up fabric shields. That's a really important point, by the way, as without that tech, they don't really stand a chance. Of course, Imperial Age is when I think the comparison becomes not just to the Arbalester, but maybe the more important question is how they compare to Hand Cannoneers. First off, the immediately obvious things are they're significantly cheaper, but have much lower attack, meaning things like Knights, Elite Skirmishers, or just anything with high pierce armor they can't punch through, like Hand Cannoneers. Of course, we can't just look at their attack, as working in the Slinger's favor here is it has a much faster reload time and also higher accuracy of 90% compared to 75%. Keep in mind, while those are the technical numbers, it can be sometimes misleading, and previously I found at medium range, averaging their accuracy on paper with 100% gives a more realistic sense of what you can expect. In fact, at medium range, their accuracy and faster attack rate mean against a non-infantry unit with zero pierce armor, the two do roughly the same damage over time. At very close range, the hand cannoneer's accuracy goes up enough, it's probably better, and at their max range, there's probably an edge to the slinger, but it would be hard to notice a real difference. And keep in mind, overkill is also working a bit harder against the hand cannoneer. The problem for the slinger is that as we add more armor, its damage output goes down much faster. For example, against a Cavalier with 6 pierce armor, the Slinger is doing about half the damage over time as a Hand Cannoneer, decreasing to about a third the damage against a Paladin with 7 pierce armor, and about a quarter the damage over time to a Skirmisher with 8 pierce armor. This is the inherent problem with Slingers in the late game, where having 9 attack just doesn't cut it against things like Heavy Cavalry and especially buildings. But what about against Infantry? That is its main purpose after all, and remember that bonus damage is unaffected by pierce armor. This may come as a surprise, but I would go as far as to argue the Humble Slinger is actually better against infantry in Imperial Age than the Hand Cannoneer, and I have numbers to back that up. Given their faster attack rate and better accuracy, the math suggests we should actually expect about 30% more damage output from a Slinger than a Hand Cannoneer, if the target is an infantry unit with no pierce armor. As we add more pierce armor, the difference decreases, but even against the 6 pierce armor of a champion with gambazins, or the 8 pierce armor of a Malian champion, once you factor in everything, the slinger is still giving you similar or perhaps a little more punch, while having less damage loss to overkill. Again, the hand cannoneer is probably better up close when accuracy approaches 100%, and has much fewer upgrades to tech into with basically just chemistry, but it's fair to say that against infantry, slingers max out with similar damage output, while being notably cheaper individually, having one more range, tracking moving targets with ballistics, and having more armor. Not a bad result for bringing a rock to a gunfight, though that rock does have fletching. Just to show all of this number crunching is reasonable, in a quick test here with 10 slingers against 30 bunched up halberdiers, it took the slingers 39 seconds to bring them all down, which is significantly better than 10 hand cannoneers 50 seconds to do the same thing. Altogether, I don't know about you, but slingers gave me a few surprises here. 
I previously typecast them as being exclusively anti-infantry, but there's a good case they hold up well compared to Castle Age crossbows as a generalist unit when fully upgraded, especially with a meat shield in front. In Imperial Age especially, where I had lower expectations, they seem to hold up against at least generic Arblesters head to head, and even more impressively stand toe to toe with hand cannoneers against infantry, with several extra advantages. They're a sneaky good unit, in my opinion, particularly in a meta being actively pushed toward infantry more and more, and are yet another great weapon in the Inca's arsenal, on top of the recently discussed Kamiak. That'll do it for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.